This is the Transformers Generations Studio Series number 68 from the movie Transformers Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Leadfoot, the third and final member of the Wreckers team for Dark of the Moon. I picked up this figure from our toys. Let's get him out of packaging. And here is Studio Series Leadfoot out of packaging. And he's actually even better looking. Uh, in hand than in the packaging and so far I'm very impressed with this figure. The figure comes with the same Chicago backdrop that we've gotten from the other Wreckers which is actually pretty cool. And here is Leadfoot together with his brothers, the other Wreckers from the Studio Series and Dark of the Moon movie. And as far as mass retail products go, these are the most accurate Wreckers from Dark of the Moon that we've gotten from Hasbro and Takaratomi. They're a little smaller in scale compared to the previously released movie line figures, but Studio Series is all about scale and they will scale perfectly with the other Studio Series figures, particularly the Dark of the Moon figures. So let's take a closer look at what we get with Leadfoot. First off, he's got his pet. This is Steeljaw. It's a non-articulated piece of plastic that's just really molded in this very nice gray, I don't know, bordering gunmetal gray type of plastic. Sculpted very nicely. The eyes are actually painted. The exhaust ports, I guess, are painted as well. So it's a nice little piece. Unfortunately, it's just not uh, articulated. There's no hinges for his legs or his head or anything like that. Basically just a display piece to go with lead foot. On to the actual figure himself. I love this sculpt. I love the aesthetics. The color, the red plastic they chose just really pops. It doesn't feel cheap. It kind of feels a little premium. This glossy black finish they put on, white Target logo, Impala, Chevy Impala right there. It's really, really nice. You get somewhat, very, a, a slight feel that it is a little bit premium, though it's not really, it's mass retail. But look at the sculpt, uh, the head sculpt and the way it's been painted. It's really nice. It's a little dark. I wish they could have made it this, uh, the goggles a little bit uh, brighter, a little bit more metallic, but that's fine. Nice silver beard really get a lot of fantastic details with this figure. Uh, he also comes with a bunch of accessories. He's got his Gatling guns right here. Very small. I wish it could have done bigger. It could have made it a little bit bigger. He's got a shoulder-mounted Gatling gun as well. He's kind of like a fat war machine with these guns. And uh, let me just point out my issues, my key issues with the figure in robot mode, just so it's out of the way. I don't mean to trash this figure or anything like that. But the first thing that really ticked me off on the figure, it, it's, it's, not, it's not a big deal, but it's also not a minor issue. And it can be annoying at times. And as you can see right here, he's got some BO blasters. Uh, he's got some armpit rockets and the slightest touch just dislodges them for some reason like on my copy you're supposed to peg the top the top slots for robot mode and then the bottom slot for car mode so i had to scrape off some plastic bits right there with a exacto knife and some tweezers and just to get it out just so it would fit and nestle right here but the slightest touch just dislodges it and even this one this one's fine but when you when you're trying to move the 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 arm uh, it, it just loves to lose to get loose and eventually it's going to it's, it's eventually going to fall so really really hate these accessories yes i hate them i mean i think the figure could have done without them or I love that they're rockets and they're really nicely sculpted and molded, but I just wish they could have improved quality on, uh, on those peg holes. They do fit better in car mode, but in robot mode, I just absolutely hate them, okay? On to the, uh, the next issue I have uh, with this figure, and you've already kind of seen it, and it's, let me get rid of these weapons. For the time being okay and it's these shoulder pegs okay the the sort of fall windows these are supposed to be the car doors but they're not the car doors are are here on the back they fold back like that so they couldn't make it as small as this but in the movie the car doors are supposed to be on his chest 
and their fall, and they plug into these pegs on the shoulders, and it, it it's it's a nice transformation. I love the engineering, but the, every time you try and move the shoulders, they just love to pop off and get untabbed. It's not that they're loose, because when you try and tab them in, it's pretty tight. It's just the way they're positioned. It's just the engineering about it, about the figure that makes them want to pop off. Like, the elbow joints are very tight, as you can see. So, if you're trying to move just the elbow joints right here, it, it loves to dislodge. Same with this one. You're trying to just make him reach out, Optimus, and then it's it just loves to unpeg. And that kind of sucks. It's You could say that it's as annoying as Blitzwing's, uh, Studio Series Blitzwing's pegs, but this is, for me, it's actually more annoying than Blitzwing. Yeah. Blitzwing I can live with because I just hold him and be fine. Same with this one. This one, you just, even if you hold it, it just loves to wobble. So maybe a ratcheting, pseudo ratcheting joint on the shoulder joint would have been nice or like a piece of plastic that would stop the shoulder from moving. That would have fixed this problem, okay? Just give you another look at the figure's details on the back. I love the compression of the doors and the hood, his stomach. The proportions are so much better with this one than the movie line, the Dark of the Moon movie line, Human Alliance, uh, Lead Foot, and Deluxe Class figure. The Deluxe Class figure was actually pretty good, but in terms of proportion and aesthetics, this one is the clear winner. I, I like it. I love it. I don't know how it happened, but, you know... I had a good feeling about this, and sure enough, I was not disappointed. Articulation for the figure, he's got a ball-jointed neck. No waist or torso articulation. You've seen the shoulder articulation. He's got a ball-joint shoulder right here, a uh, swivel right here, and a hinge for the elbows. Wrists can go in and out because of transformation. He's got a ball-jointed hip. Actually, it's a, it has lots of motion, lots of range of motion, despite being a squat type of stocky figure. He's got a thigh swivel. It's got a hinge knee and some toe articulation because of transformation. No rocker joints or anything like that. But overall, despite those issues I've had with the weapons and that shoulder joint uh, peg, the figure is actually pretty good. Very, very impressed with it. Okay, so let's get him into his alt mode. Transform the figure. It can be tricky. I suggest you don't follow the instructions down to the letter. You read it once and then try and, and and transform it the way the instructions tell you, but along the way, things are gonna be intuitive and you'll probably be best off or better off without the instructions, okay? So, first thing we wanna do are the feet. You're gonna fold up the toes right here. Go ahead and fold up the whole foot assembly that will form the rear part of the car. And then what you wanna do are the hips. You're gonna fold the hips down like this. Lock them there in place. Okay. Out of the package, it comes like this. You'll have to pull those out uh, when you get them into robot mode. Next thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and untab, uh, if they're, unless they're already untabbed. Uh, this front end of the robot, these, this old torso assembly is going to fold back like this. And this is a little tricky. You got to fold the head down back like that. The four doors are going to swivel like that. And then you're going to open up this part of the bonnet or the hood. And you're going to swivel that entire neck assembly, chest assembly, all the way back like that and close up that hood. So, very nice. And then what you want to do is this whole rear section right here is going to fold like this. Now, you're going to encounter some clearance issues. I thought at first it was, but the best way to do it to avoid that uh, tires or the wheel scraping that peg is you fold the shoulders a little bit inward and it's going to and it's going to clear the wheels or the tires very nicely and the friction of those two pegs right there is going to lock that whole assembly in place you can still remove it but right here this this whole assembly here is going to friction tab right there and those two are going to lock in place so very nice okay and then fold these out and then go ahead and fold the whole hip assembly uh, right here. Now the instructions tell you at this point is to tab in these feet on the backpack. I would advise against it. I think you should go ahead and fold the arms 
first and combine them with these pieces before you do any tabbing of sorts because it's very difficult to do so once this thing is tabbed, okay? In the meantime, let's go and finish this up. The front part of the car is going to tab in right here. And as I mentioned, the arms, you're gonna swing right here. The, the hands are gonna fold inside. Forearms are gonna twist like this. Same with this one, they're gonna twist like that. Okay. And then they are going to fold inward. That whole shoulder assembly is gonna fold like that, gonna fold like this. And at this point, it's best if you tab that forearm on to that foot like that, because it's so much more difficult if, to do this as you can see, it's actually pretty difficult right now doing it, but can you imagine how difficult it would be if you've already tabbed both legs and the backpack together? So once you've gotten everything tabbed in, excuse me, just finish this, okay, okay. Line it up, and then these tabs right here, they're going to tab and slot onto the feet like that. And then the feet, they're gonna tab in together with that big peg. It's not a peg of doom, it's just really nice and tight. And what you want to do is you want to try and flatten the car so that the wheels and this whole undercarriage clears and you'll be able to roll the wheels. So just make sure you fold everything up like that. And I kid you not, the clearance of the wheels of the undercarriage so that the wheels roll is half a millimeter. I don't even need to measure it to know. It's half a millimeter. This one's a millimeter of clearance, but this one is half a millimeter. And as such, once you try and roll it, you will hear a little bit of scraping. And I tried my best to just level the car mode and it, it will roll, but you'll hear a lot of scraping because of that very, very low microscopic clearance. Nevertheless, it is an amazing car mode. And I'm really liking it. In fact, this could be my favorite in robot mode and in car mode out of all three wreckers. Now let's complete the transformation by adding the weapons. Uh, you put the main Gatling gun here, the smaller machine guns right here. Okay, once that's done, the rockets. The rockets use the other tabs uh, right here, the lower, the, lower, the lower peg holes. They're gonna tab in right here. And they actually fit nicely. They fit much better in, uh, in car mode. And it's the same peg, it's just you're using a different one, a different slot, and it kinda works actually, but even without this missiles, the missiles, I can do without. I honestly can do without. Because the car, despite having that peg, looks really nice. Better lines, I think, than with the, the rockets. The rockets just make him look fierce and a lot more ominous and gives him a bigger presence on the road. And even the color scheme, the gunmetal gray with this bright red, just perfect on this alt mode. You get some nice decals right here, not decals, but tamo, uh, tempos of the NASCAR logo, number 42, Wreckers Ultra Wheels. Very nice. Yeah, this is a perfect, perfect alt mode, except for, you know, could have done that. I mean, if my surface is a little bit more flat, you'd see him roll perfectly because of that half a millimeter clearance. Steel jaw, unfortunately, there's no place to put him. Just no, nowhere to store him in car mode. And here is Leadfoot together with Roadbuster and Topspin, both in alt mode as well. And even in alt mode, my favorite is still Leadfoot. I, I mean, this guy is cool. He probably rolls the best. But Leadfoot, this guy, I don't have to say anything about this anymore. I just look at them all together. They look great. They look great on the shelf, especially in the stealth mode or battle mode, weapons mode version. But aesthetic wise, even transformation, I really believe that Leadfoot is the best. And so some final thoughts on this figure. I had a blast with Leadfoot. I had some issues with the shoulder joints and these rockets. 
those are going to bring the score down to about 9 out of 10. Still a pretty good score. Not entirely a deal breaker for me. I think out of all the three, I think I had the most fun with Leadfoot. And I think he's my favorite wrecker in terms of the Studio Series figures. These two other figures are just necessary to complete the team. Roadbuster is a safe bet. He's not super bad, but he's not super great. Leadfoot, I think, is bordering on super great, while this guy is bordering on super bad. So there you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed my video review of the Studio Series Leadfoot figure. Whether you hate the figure or you love the figure, you like the Wreckers, you hate the Wreckers, you love how they were uh, given a Studio Series treatment, let me know in the comment section. I'd be very interested to know how you feel about these figures, particularly Leadfoot. And as always, hit that notification bell so you never miss out on any of my latest video reviews. If it's your first time here, please subscribe and please check out my Patreon account. If you want to help me make more videos, uh, you can contribute to Patreon. The lowest contribution is $3. I'd appreciate any form of contribution just to help me do these videos and do more of these videos. Every bit of help goes a long way in helping me make more video reviews. Thanks for watching.